Now boarding all passengers to the basis.net. All right, we are back. We're on the wrong screen also. Hey, welcome everyone. Sorry if uh, you guys can't see anything. Whoops. Oh no, that's not what I want to do. I'm hitting buttons over here. I've got a live, whoops. I've got a recording session I need to do today. Um, and I figured I would track it live in front of y'all. So why not? I've been known to do that from time to time. Hey, as you're coming in, do me a favor. Just do me a favor. Please give this video a thumbs up. And also, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get notified uh, when I go live next. Which, it's been a minute. I apologize. Um, <laughs> I've kind of been out of uh, out of commission the past couple of days. I had to do a whole bunch of tech stuff. I had to do a reformat on my computer. And uh, as you can see, things look a little bit different. Hey, sweet egg, how's it going? Felipe from Brazil. Good to have you. Um, in case you couldn't tell from the uh which we call it from the uh the title, we're doing a live streamed recording session today. I've got uh actually three songs that I need to do. I keep looking over here, that's where my camera used to be. Now the camera's over this way, so things look just a little bit different. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, I've actually got three songs to do today. One of them is for an artist, and the other two are just some play-alongs that I need to do uh, for a company called Universal Audio. Uh, they asked me to do some, just some playing along using their plugins uh, for their social media to do some videos and stuff. So I figured I'd do that right now, and I'll do some recording. I'll do some tracking. Hey, how's it going, everybody? We got Matt from Seacliff, New York. Good to have you. Uh, David, you are very welcome. welcome. Thank you for tuning in today. And uh, Mr. Violero from Brazil. We got, wait, lots of Brazil tuning in. And Junior, all right, that's three of you. Three Brazilians in one live stream. <laughs> I don't know. I don't normally hear from Brazil. Um, someone from Fl France, good to have you, as always. So before we get any further, I just want to do a, a, a really quick thing and just say a super big thank you to GHS Strings for making this live stream possible. Uh, I'm playing, these are the bass boomers. As you can see right now, I'm trying to intonate this thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, these bass boomers are my favorite. Um, I don't like the feel of stainless steel strings, but I love the sound of them. They're nice and bright, but they kind of feel Velcro-y on my fingers. Uh, whereas nickel doesn't feel that way, but they have less sustain. They just don't sound as bright and as sharp and as crisp as stainless st st stainless steel strings. God, say that 10 times fast. Um, and, and so the bass boomers is just a perfect balance between the two because it's a steel string and then wrapped or coated, whatever the term is, uh, wrapped in nickel. So it feels like a nickel string, but sounds a bit more like a stainless steel. steel. <laughs> And not talk today. Ah, that's just how it goes sometimes. So anyways, go check them out at ghsstrings.com. There's a link in the description. Who else we got here? Uh, John from Cincinnati. Good to have you. Watching in the Netherlands. Nice, nice, nice. Um, cool. So again, what we're doing today is I'm live streaming a recording session. Over here, um, I've got uh, you know a, a, a track pulled up. This artist just sent it over to me a couple days ago. Kind of like a blues rock. It's a, it's a pretty cool song. I'm really excited to track on this. Uh, this was done by my buddy, Bill Worrell. Um, I've tracked a few of his songs here on these live streams before. Um, he's a good friend of mine from college. I've played on so many of his recordings over the years, over the past like 10, 15 years probably. <laughs> Wait, how long ago was college? longer than that it was a pretty long time ago actually let me just double check is is uh, this coming through for you guys can you hear it it looks like i can uh, see it on the meters yeah so anyways this is a uh this song is drop tuned down a half step and also in drop tuning so uh, i've got to take my bass from e standard down to e flat and then i need to take that low e flat and drop it to a d flat or a c sharp and um, not so sure. It's the reason why I'm gravitating towards this particular P bass on this song. If you know me, you know I'm a J, play, J player, J bass nonstop. And uh, the past couple of sessions I've been doing on the precision, um, it's because it's good to go back 
go back home and, and see what things are like again. But um, this bass just has a bit thicker strings than any of my J's, and I think it'll do better with this lower tuning. I didn't really want to go for the five string, because to me that's just a different sound. I still wanted the, the passive four kind of tone. Um, but so I'm just going to check my intonation really quick. By the way, a video just went live here, or three videos, called How to Set Up Your Bass. So if you want to know how to do a setup, adjust your truss rod, your action, all that stuff. It's one of the last videos that just went live at this channel. Uh, but so while I'm doing this, we'll just wait a couple more minutes for some people to show up, and then I'm just going to jump right in and start recording. So if you guys have any questions, uh, please, please shout... Uh, Yell at me. <laughs> Let me know uh, in the comments section. I know over, oh, they're over this way now. Um, they're really, really small. As you can see, I'm working on some format stuff. We're bringing up something called the backstage pass. You can see right here. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but for now, let's just ignore all of that stuff. And just tell me, tell me how you guys are doing it. Let me know if you have any questions. It looks like it sounds great. Track volume, good. Sounds great, loud and clear. We all like it loud, good. That's the way to do it. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, not necessarily about recording, but about anything at all, um, please let me know. And while I just double check my intonation, uh, I will kind of tune back in with you guys. Just in case you want to know what I'm doing, like pretty much, here's the pedal board. So the idea is I'm, I'm tuning my open string. You can see the tuner right here. So once you get that guy in tune, you come up to the octave. And you can see now, actually, the open strings, I mean, my lowest string's decent. You know, it never gets perfectly still. Yeah, that's not bad. This guy's usually the culprit. So pretty much you want it to be in tune on the open string and at the octave. Okay, so see how the open string, it's nice and tuned. It's not going anywhere. And then when I go like this, it's still flat, which means I need to move my bridge saddle. Which direction, I don't remember. And by the way, you can see I've got a whole bunch of junk around me, so I'm, like, <laughs> I'm trying to set this up without moving, without hitting stuff. Hold on. Where is that screw? This guy just needed a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so let's see. You guys got any questions, anything you want to know before I get to work here? Faces. Okay, this one's from David. It says, makes difference recording, record the bass after guitars. Will they record again on your feeling? Yeah, typically uh, in a recording session, like if we're all getting called in, we'll do the bass first. I'm sorry, we'll do the drums first. He'll, he'll perform to like a scratch guitar and a scratch vocal. Or maybe we'll all live track in the room together. But then we'll go back and we'll start doing the instruments one at a time just to get more control. Sorry, I went the wrong direction. Um, not necessarily on the performance side, but on the uh, recording side. It'll just, you know, without all the bleed and everything from the different microphones, um, it's a good idea to go back afterwards and then retrack certain elements. You know? Um, yeah, so that being said, typically it's rhythm section first, so bass, then drums, then rhythm guitars, then lead guitars, keys and that kind of stuff, uh, auxiliary percussions, tambourines, claps, you know, all that stuff, and then uh, vocals, backing vocals, all that stuff comes last. Um, hey, Mark, how's it going? Matt says, do you recommend one of those guitar tech toolkits? Uh, I have one. I have one that Ernie Ball gave me the last time I was over at their um, headquarters there in uh, in Los Angeles. And it's cool. It's got, you know, a bunch of different things that you would need at a gig on the stage in the studio or whatever. But I mean, obviously a screwdriver is a screwdriver. I normally don't go through uh, this much work like before a recording session to intonate the bass. But again, this is an alternate tuning and this low string is way tuned down. So I also need to keep one other thing in mind. Um, this is something that uh, a lot of guys who play drop tuning are aware of this. And those of us who do it every once in a while don't kind of realize this. 
Uh, but when you're playing a song that's drop D or drop C sharp, we want that, we want to dig in and really hammer on those notes. But as you do that, you're also going to cause the strings to get loose and flop around and, <laughs> you know, lose their tuning. So I know it sounds like I'm smacking the string. But I'm not actually hitting it that hard. Uh, to, to, to give you an idea of the difference, here's how I'm actually going to play. And here's what... And here's what most people would do. You know, to get that like smacky rage against the machine kind of tone. And if you're playing that hard and your strings aren't thick enough, like these aren't, this is a bass and I'm tuning down for this song, you're just gonna put your instrument out of tune before you even get done recording it. So it'll sound like I'm really smacking the strings, but I'm not. I'm actually playing with the softer touch and I'm just kind of adjusting my technique to get more smack out of it. All right, looks like we're good to go. Um, I'll come back here every once in a while and uh, check on you guys and see if you have any other questions uh, about anything I'm doing or anything that I'm doing here in this live stream um, uh, tracking this song today. Mark, you're asking about which way to turn it uh, to move the bridge saddle. Yeah, I forget every time too, <laughs> which is why I made a video with Pete. Hilton from Hilton Guitars to show me. And even then I still, I've, I've, I've watched it like three or four times <laughs> since recording that because uh, I've had to do a couple of setups on my bass and I still forget which one. Um, okay, so first thing I'll do is just kind of, I've, I've already sort of done the tone stuff, um, but uh, I've just got an amp sim pulled up. Um, this is a universal audio plugin. In fact, I'll show you which one it is. This is a killer plugin. It's their um, Ampeg SVT model. This thing is, whoo, sounds so good. Here's what the bass sounds like without it. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah. So that's just DI. Whew. Yeah, this is such a great sound to plug in. And there's nothing else on the channel. You know, I'm not... Uh, um, adding any compression or anything like that. We're just going to go old school balls of the wall rock and roll uh, with this kind of tune. So um, I'm going to dial in a little bit of top end on the way in. Because I do have, uh, if you want to see over here, I'm running into this trick fish pedal. I don't hear it. do. Oh, oh, I'm running it. Sorry, I'm bypassing this. <laughs> I totally forgot. I'm actually hitting this for a different channel that's also being recorded. To show you what I mean, I'm recording the bass DI. This one's what's coming through the Trickfish, and then the bass amp, this one's coming uh, from the Universal Audio plugin. So I'll record two different channels. This is good to give the artist just one dry. They can do their own effects, and then this one is you know, my amp tone. So actually, the DI will bypass uh, the, um, the EQ, just so he's got it. All right, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to play through it one time. And uh, yeah, just kind of do what I think it's supposed to do. I've already listened to the song a couple of times. I haven't played through it and kind of composed my part yet, so I'll do that with you guys right now. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to play along. Sorry. Okay, so right there, uh, there was a cool snare drum fill that he did. And by the way, again, I've, I've listened to this, kind of know how it goes, uh, but I haven't pieced it all together yet. So 
obviously the first thing was the riff. And I'm just getting that from the rhythm guitar. I think it's coming out of my left ear. Um, just want to check and make sure you guys aren't yelling at me like things can't be heard and stuff. Awesome. Good. All right. Sweet. Um, but it, it, coming out of this uh, little bridge section, uh, the drums did a pop, 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 pop. It wasn't straight like, um, wasn't straight 16th notes. Bop, 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 bop. So I'm going to line up and match that with them. like that. Okay, now at this part of the song, sorry, I was doing two other things. I was <laughs> two, two other things at once. At this part of the song, the artist requested that I play the part that you're hearing currently on the, the right-hand side. Uh, it's all over the one chord. So I've just got to match what the, uh, what the right guitar is doing. Um, and I think I'm going to do that up an octave. If I do it too low, here's the part. that's what a bass player should do i'm going to play it up here instead um because later on in the song that's going to come back and it'll have more emphasis if i go to the low one then and that's, that, that that sorry that's just one of my go-to it's not even a secret but it's just something i do every time i, I save my lowest part for the end you know it's kind of like the ace up the sleeve <laughs> you know if i show my hand too early i, I got nowhere else to go and so that's just one of one of the things that i find myself doing a lot um is just making sure uh to leave myself room i guess to give yourself some headroom so i'm just going to play it up high for now and then i'll go down low uh when it repeats at some point okay here we go Drums did a cool fill there. I'm going to see if I can't pick up on that. Oh, this went bomb, 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 bomb. Oh, shoot. Okay, I thought it was cooler than that, but basically, it's the same thing from the riff before. I'm going to back it up and hit the uh, guitar solo. Come out right there. I'm pretty sure I need to lay out here.
like I said, I already knew how a lot of that went already. I, I, I did listen to this song a couple of times, but I haven't really played through it. That was my first time actually playing the song. Um, and, and, and again, I'm just trying to think of like, okay, the artist isn't here with me in the room. And I tried to line it up. We, uh, you know, our schedules just didn't happen today. And that's okay. So it just means I can't ask them, hey, do you like this or do you like this? I mean, I can't give them three options to hear at the moment. I've got to kind of use my own judgment and be like, mm, I'm not going to give him every idea. I'm just going to give him the top two or three that I come up with. You know, um, this one's way up. This one's a total stretch. This one's playing it safe. And then this one's kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, so that's what I'm kind of doing on my first listen through. Whether the artist is in the room or not, I'm just kind of making those notes like, all right, what do I think this person wants to do? And what do I want to do? And then, you know, we come to some sort of middle ground. Um, let's just see uh, if we got any questions, anything in here. Happy one year anniversary to Monster Muttware. Hey, yo, that's my wife's company. One of the sponsors, actually, no, it's this way now. Sorry, I reoriented everything. <laughs> so now I don't know where all my stuff is. Uh, but yeah, that's my wife's company. She makes a really cool rock and roll, punk rock, heavy metal, uh, dog bandanas, collars, stickers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, link in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, what's the signal chain? Matt wants to know for the um, DI. Uh, it's just bass straight into uh, this guy over here. We're not monitoring the DI at the moment because um, everything's flat. I'm just giving him a totally clean channel. So that's what's happening over here. And then I already went through it, but on the screen recording, I'm sorry, on the, uh, let me bring this guy over here. Sorry, so you can see. In Universal Audio, there's this amazing Ampeg uh, SVT plugin. That's the one that uh, we're really listening to. And I might even just put that all the way up because I'm loving the smack. No compression, no EQ, nothing else. Um, just just the amp sim. And again, just because I can, uh, this artist wants just a totally dry track and, and uh, a, a mic'd up amp. So this is kind of the easiest way to do that. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Um, oh, Matt, sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you have a fuzzy leg friend, 20% off today. Yeah, actually, that's totally true. There's a, a coupon that you can use. John says, I have a hairless cat. Well, can't help you there. <laughs> actually, I take that back. We have had some cat owners buy because she also makes stuff for very small dogs. They happen to be the same size a lot. Um, da -da 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 puppy cat. Uh, Nice Hendrixy sound on those guitars. Yep, that's Bill Worrell, fantastic uh, rock guitarist, one of my favorites. David says, do you like to have someone giving you feedback on your playing, fills, and color? Yeah, ideally um, to have the producer here in the room so I can work with them. With all this coronavirus stuff, that's not really possible at the moment. And so I have been doing some remotely because I can bring... Uh, Okay, you see how I'm in this box right here? I've done a recording session where just below me, there's another guy who could, you know, kind of like Skype in and uh, give me some almost real-time feedback. But as far as playing together, that, that technology doesn't exist yet. Oh, you were asking about musicians. Well, the track's already done. So, I mean, I'm playing, I'm already playing to it. What we don't have is I go for a thing and the drummer follows me on it. But, I mean, that's not necessary, you know. Um, if I could only play when I'm, creating with people in the room, that would be a problem because you should be able to make music, you know, uh, when there's people in the room, when there's not people in the room, when the music's already recorded, when it hasn't been recorded yet, like, you know, a, a good basketball player needs a team, but he can also just shoot, <laughs> you know, a good player needs to be able to play regardless of the scenario. Um, so yeah, I mean, ideally my favorite way is get everybody in the room. Anytime you see stuff at my channel, if there's a live video that goes out, it was track live. Um, Kellyanne's uh, 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 The Real Thing EP um, trying to think Every, almost everything I've done the past two years always live tracked get the band horn section singers knock it out in a day and call it um, my favorite way to do it but again budgets and, 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 and uh, uh, time frame schedules all that stuff it just doesn't line up and especially right now with all this COVID stuff definitely not happening um, yeah so let's uh <laughs> Tone is killing. Thank you so much, man. And Ernesto, nice to meet you at Ma'am Nam too. Question: uh, How much of the line is written, and how much is your own for this track? I I haven't uh, recorded it yet. I was just listening and playing along. So at the moment, 
the line that I'm playing is pretty much what the rhythm guitars are giving me since they're recorded already. This artist likes to do things backwards. He records his guitar parts first, sends them to a drummer and a bass player, and then, um, you know, we, uh, rather than like I was saying in the beginning, usually it's drums first, then bass, and then guitar. This guy just likes to do it this way because he's a really good guitar player and he knows how to give us room. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, he already wrote the lines. I'm just doubling them, trying to figure them out and double them, and then adding in fills and harmoni harmonizing when I can. Uh, but yeah, speaking of which, let's go ahead and uh, do a pass. Um, let me just double check and make sure I've got layers on both of these set up. So again, as you can see, uh, hold on. Yeah, we got to take set up. All right, I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need it anymore. Um, yeah, I'm going to be recording a bass DI and a bass amp. Again, you're only hearing... You're only hearing the bass amp at the moment. The, the DI is not coming through, and that's on purpose. If I do bring it in, now you're getting some phasing issues, and we just don't need that right now. The DI is really just there in case the artist wants to do something with it later. Checking my tuning up top. And again, I want to be careful with how much of that smack because I don't want to clip the converters that are uh, recording me right now. I don't want to cause those to spike, but I also don't want to cause the bass to go out of tune. So that's going to kind of be the hardest thing about this. Um, so here's my first pass. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, this one's for me. I'm going to explore. I'm going to do whatever. And then the second take, I'll probably do the really vanilla basic one. And if I got ideas, I'll, I'll toss him a third. And pretty much what he'll do is he'll comp between all these and make a line that uh, that he wants to use. Um, so, okay, here we go.
Okay, so there's the first take. Uh, step one is press save. Always, always, always press save. That's <laughs> that's a smart move. Um, and to be honest, there was a couple of things I know that I missed um, in terms of lining up with the guitar likes because uh, they are a little bit different each time. Uh, for instance, that's the first time. See how the cadence was different on the second one. Uh, and I know that I missed one or two things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do another full playthrough. Uh, sometimes I'll just call it a day here and just do some punches. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm selecting take two on both of these guys. And uh, we'll do a fresh new pass on it. But before I do that, let's come over here and see if we got any questions. Anything you guys need help with? Um, saludos, Bolivia. I don't think we've had someone from Bolivia before. Nice to have you. Um, man, this is awesome. Thanks, David. Oh, you're more than welcome, dude. Uh, Ernesto says your tone is kill. Oh, sorry. That was a previous question. Wow. Bass sounds great. Mark, it's hard to go wrong with a P bass in an Ampeg <laughs> SVT. Uh, it's kind of, uh, that's, uh, it's like square one, you know, start there and, and you, you can't go wrong. So I'm going to do this again. Uh, sorry. I'm going to do this one more time. Uh, but this time I'm going to go for a bit of a more, uh, I'm going to play out a little bit. I guess that ended up being my safe pass. Um, I gave the artist what I'm positive he wanted, at least what he told me in the email. And now I'm going to kind of uh, stretch out a little bit. You know what, Mark? To be honest, uh, I'm not bragging here, but that is my goal. My goal when I send an artist, um, you know, two takes or whatever, I want all of them to be the take. I want the producer, the artist, whoever it is, to listen to one, two, and three and go, Fuck, I, I don't know which one to go with. They're all good. I, I, this one does this, this one does that, and ooh, now we can, like, that's what I want to happen. I, I, I don't want them to go, well, clearly it's got to be this one. I kind of want them to, to struggle a, a little bit. And so, and in my opinion, that's just, that's a good studio musician. That's that's what a good studio bassist, guitarist, whoever it is, whatever they send you, you got to go, mm, I didn't think it was going to be this good. Now I've got to rethink that bridge because this new bass line or this new guitar melody, this new harmony, uh, oh, now we got to go back to the drawing board. Like that's, to me, that, that's how I know I'm doing my job right as I make them go back and do some work because I'm working right now. Why shouldn't they? All right, uh, let's do this again. This one, again, is a little bit more, um, I'm going to play it out just a little bit more in, in, in this one, see what I can't give them. And uh, hold on, let me re remember how the beginning goes. Because there's a fill that I want to do. I just want to get this far. Right. Sorry, right there, there's something I want to try on this take. I want to give that drum in, uh, actually, there's a guitar line too. You guys hear that? Ah, dang it, hold on. The guitar is doing it, I'm going to do it too. So uh, it starts on an F. It's going to sound a little... What's the word? Honky coming from me? Because he's doing... He's doing it as a bend. I'm not going to do that because uh, I can't... I, two, a double string bend is not going to work on this one. But I think that's going to do the trick. That was almost it. Hold on. 
Oh, I didn't even play it around. Because he's coming down a blues scale, not a pentatonic. But I'm missing his timing. Whoops. Back it up. Where is that? Okay, I'm one beat, one beat too early. That's where it goes. Can I play the notes? Apparently not. Alright, I know he's gonna want to hear that. So if I back that up and kind of throw it in with the verse now. That, that's a much easier way to finger it. Much easier. Whoops. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. There was something going into that section. I was like, ah, there's a better thing for me to do than just whatever I did in the last take. So... Always do that. Any any anytime you 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 know there's spots where it's like ah oh, this transition this drum fill ba, 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 da, da, da. that was another one I missed from the last take. Uh, it's coming up right around here. I'll take you far. Just give me life and I will bring you the stars. Yeah, same thing with that one. Uh, so after my first pass, I always kind of go through and be like, oh, what were those sections? There was this fill, this thing, this line. <laughs> And now I want to hit it. So that's what I'm going to do. Check my tuning. Okay. Um, I'm also going to do this on this one. Um, I need to record this not only uh, for this live stream and for this artist, but Universal Audio. Um, the company that makes that that Ampeg plugin, uh, they asked me to send them a bunch of clips of me playing using their stuff, and so I'm going to switch angles around because I'm going to send them these clips from this particular pass. Um, so, anyways, you guys won't be able to see what's going on on the screen, but you'll still be able to watch me play. Here we go.
Okay, I think that was pretty good for the artist, um, but I still want to do it again for Universal Audio. Uh, I'm almost positive the artist has, not almost positive, I'm 100% positive the artist has everything he needs between those two, what in the world's going on here? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, stop. Between those two different takes, he can comp out, oh, I prefer this fill, or I want him to, you know, uh, line up with this riff, or whatever I did. So he's got everything he needs to, to finish the song. To, to, to comp it together the way he likes. Again, since he's not here in the room to tell me. Uh, but I'm going to do it one more time because I do want a pass uh, that's a little bit more... Um, uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to do, and this is the one that's going to go out on social media, on Universal Audio's page, and, and on my stuff. So I just want to step it up a little bit. I know I can do better. Uh, so this next one's for me. I'm still going to give the artist uh, a th the third take. So let's expand these layers. Now we've got take one, take two, and here's a fresh one on the third take. Before I do this, let's check and see. Anyone got any questions? Um, God, he's a dog hair in my mouth. <laughs> uh, Dave says, uh, working this way, what things have to be clear if each musician is in a different DAW? Um, nothing, because they're sending me just a WAV file. And a wave file is a wave file. I'm just playing to a mix that they sent. I'm going to send them the bass track. It's identical. There's, there's no difference. Um, if we were going back and forth in the same session and the drums weren't finalized and he's editing things that would affect what I'm going to do, then, yeah, you would all want to be in the same DAW. But if you're just exporting wave files, the only things you need to be clear are what is the frame, uh, not frame rate, that's camera, uh, what, what, what is the, the bit depth and um, uh, the sample rate. Are, are, is it 2448? Is it 16444.1? Are you doing 192K? You just, you, uh, th those things, technical mumbo jumbo, but but that's it. That's the only stuff. Um, Mark, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, David says, how many takes uh, are you requested? None. Uh, I, I, use, I always tell him I'll give him at least two and a third one if I'm feeling creative, uh, but two passes is pretty much all they need. Um, you don't want to give him too much. If you give them seven different takes, well, now it's going to take them too long to comp it together. They're kind of asking you to bring in your ideas, and so they can just check off and go, no, 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 yes, no, 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 take that one. And you know, if you give them too much to choose from, you have uh, what's the, what, what's that called? Something syndrome. Having too many decisions, too many choices. What the heck is that called? That's got a name, and I can't think of what it is. Uh, Jamie, what would you suggest to a bassist with dyslexia? Um, I, I know two concert violinists. Both of them are doctorates and uh, have dyslexia, and they read music better than anyone I've ever met in my life. Um, so I don't know that I've ever encountered a musician who dyslexia affects their abilities because these, these two people are as high as it gets. Doctorate of violin, classical violin, there's no higher degree you can get, and both of them have dyslexia. So what would I say? I mean, I don't. I don't know anything about it other than it makes it hard to read, uh, but apparently it wasn't a factor for them. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to downplay what you're uh, you're um, what you're dealing with or anything, but I'm just letting you know. Two of the top professionals I know also have dyslexia, so uh, they must get by with it somehow. I, I don't know what the secret is. Um, analysis paralysis. That's the one. I was like. Damn it. I know there's there's like a rhyme that makes this work. Uh, Felipe says, are you paid even your client don't use your lines? Um, yeah. Uh, the check comes in before I start working. You know, I take that back. The way I do it, I'll, I'll do like 60% down payment. Um, I'll do the work and I'll send them FP, MP3s of it mixed into the track already so they can't steal it and not pay me the rest of it. And then I just say, yeah, the rest is due. And sometimes they might come back and be like, hey, instead of doing that, can you give us that at the end of chorus one? Sure. And there'll be some punches and, you know, they'll send me over the rest of the money. I'll send them the last, uh, the final takes, individual wave files and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's usually how it works. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to do this one more time. This is for me, not for uh, the recording. The recording, because again, I think that he's got what he needs. Let's hit the save button. Uh, but I do want to just give myself one more, because uh, I'm going to be using this as well. And I'm just going to go, I don't know, play a few more, few more things, be more experimental, 
And who knows, maybe this will just be trash. <laughs> One way to find out. Here we go. Okay, so the first half of that um, was not what I was hoping it would be. But that's okay. Um, again, that one was for me, for socials, and I'll just cut out the, the bits that I don't like. <laughs> for me and for uh, Universal Audio. So uh, that's it for that song. I've got two more that I need to do, uh, but these aren't going to be songs for artists. So uh, let me come over here and press save because that's really, really important to do. So pretty much at this point, all I'm going to do is, uh, oh, whoops. This is what I want. So at this point, pretty much, I'm going to come over here, take one, and uh, bounce out this one for them, and then do the same thing for take two, for take three. And uh, yeah, he'll have these three different passes. You can see they're a little bit different. You know, this one comes in here, these two come in there. Just trying to give them some variety. And uh, I'll be able to use these for socials and stuff too. High octave part was so yummy. Thank you. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. Um, sorry, I, we got a whole bunch of comments over here that I missed. Uh, da, 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 David, love this. Thank you so much, man. Uh, such a bass wave line machine. I, bass wave line machine. I like that. I like that. The bass, <laughs> bass line. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that, dude. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do this again. I've got two other songs to do. 
uh, again, these ones are now no longer for clients. This is for stuff that I need to do for socials. Again, um, I was asked to just submit a bunch of clips of me playing, and why not? Uh, why not do that now? So this one is. Why is that tab function not working? Hold on. There we go. Okay, I'm sure I'm sure you guys know this one. This is called "Well Behaved Women." It's a uh, song I've done many times at many different YouTube channels. And what am I doing right now? Oh, I need to retune. Um, yeah, so this one again, I've done this a million times. I already know how this song goes. I just need to send them something. Something to play to, basically. But you know what? I don't think I've ever done this uh, with a P bass before. Let me see if I like it. I'm just not feeling it. It's got to be the J. So hold on one second. I'm going to turn this bass off. All right, now we won't get the pop. Except I totally still hear it. Why is that? There we go. <sighs> Where is that bass? Ah. Come on. Yeah, every time I've done this song, it's uh, the neck pickup of the J bass. And it's my favorite way to... Ooh, this bass just feels so good. Plug it back in. I love a precision bass, but J bass. End of discussion. Get yourself a J, call it a day. Ooh, it just rhymed too. <laughs> I'm going to coin that. All right. Let's get some sound coming back in. Uh, it's definitely quieter, so let me come over. Hmm. Let's gain this puppy up first. All right. Um, what do I need? Sorry, there's some software I've got to open up in order to do this. Actually, we're going to turn off the SVT. And let's uh, turn on the B15. Here we go. Let's choose a preset. Why not? in here I really like 16 it's not that one good starting place let's turn off that top end a little bit where are we that. 
How's that blend with this guy? Oh, I didn't even tune. in a little bit. Yes. Okay, that's the tone. That's what we're doing. Now, I let you guys watch that in real time. Normally, uh, I've already done all these things before I go live, but that's how long I spend getting tone. No longer. I, I don't sit here and tweak away at knobs and, and that's not what I'm into. I want to get to making music as quickly as possible. Not this bass. Okay. Try it out another one. Do a couple of things. With, all right. Let's hit the ground running because I want to make music. Get yourself a J, call it a day. <laughs> there you go. And that's the reason why I like the J bass so much is, uh, I mean, literally I took the tone knob from here and I brought it down to here. And you probably don't even notice and that's fine. <laughs> that's all it needs. J pick up all the way up, take the bridge pick up out. Uh, this J bass has round wounds. Um, I do have a jazz bass with some flats, but uh, not for this song. I definitely want the sustain. Um, okay, so again, this one's just for me. I'm just going to record this uh, like as a one one pass through, and I'll pick different sections that are going to go up on socials. Again, this was requested by Universal Audio, so just trying to give them what they want. So here we go. Mm -hmm. 